So I'm a moderator at Amiga.org, and um, I'm also a contributing editor to uh, IntuitionDate.com, although I've really been active the past uh, couple of years. But what I wanted to talk to you all about today a little bit is the uh, market for commercial software on the Amiga. Um, it's my view and, and the view of a lot of people that one of the ways you can tell the health of uh, a platform is the availability of commercial software, not just public domain software, shareware, freeware, and so forth. And um, it's certainly not like back in the day where you had hundreds of software houses writing thousands of commercial titles. But things have improved dramatically over the past few years, a lot of which is due to the efforts of Matthew and Trevor at Aon, who have been actively encouraging developers to get commercial software available to the public. Um, they have created an online platform for reselling this and taking care of things like taxes, distribution, update mechanism, and so forth. Um, and, and we've seen an explosion in, in commercial software. Um, to date, and what I wanted to show you first this morning, and uh, I apologize for the machine that I'm running on. I'm, I'm running on my old Pegasus 2, which is um, painfully slow and has a faulty processor, so this is probably going to crash a couple of times, and it just did. So let's, let's try this again. Talk us amongst yourselves. To deal with problems like this anymore. This Pegasus board is is, is literally uh, more than a decade old at this point, and it, it it's just it's in real trouble, and it is painfully slow, and it is frustrating because a lot of us are so used to much faster machines. So the only thing I will say to you is if you still have an XE or a Peg or a SAM 440, do whatever you have to do and, and, and upgrade to a Tabor or an X5000, whatever you have to do. Rob a bank, sell a limb, hit me. <laughs> Believe me, it's worth it. <laughs> sell someone else's kidney. That works too. <laughs> so let's try this one last time, and if this freezes, I won't use all of uh, We maintain an active list on intuitionbase.com of available software titles for Amiga OS 4. This list consists of both uh, applications as well as games. Uh, everything that is listed here is available for sale right now for a price. It does not list software that is not OS 4 native. It does not list software that hasn't shipped yet. It's literally stuff you can go out right now and buy. You can click a link to find out more information about it by going to the product page and you can click the buy link and it will take you somewhere where you can actually purchase the software. This is intuitionbase.com. This is a pretty old site, it's been around for a long time. Um, and while the news section isn't actively updated, um, the databases are updated whenever we get updates. We keep track of uh, things like uh, dealers for each country that are still active and remove them when they're inactive, um, and, and things like this. So. All right, so um, let's have some quick stats. So over the past uh, four years or so, the amount of commercial software for OS4, both in terms of games as well as application software, has more than doubled. We're currently up to a total of 73 titles that are available for pay. There are 38 applications and tools available for pay, as well as some 35 commercial games. This does not count all of the commercial stuff that you can buy that runs on 68K as well as on OS 4. So this is just stuff that is exclusive to the Amiga 1 platform. And what I'd like to do now is I'd kind of like to walk you all through a, a few of my personal favorites, some of which you're probably familiar with, some of which you may not be. And the very first one, and the, the main reason why I stuck with the Amiga throughout thick and thin since I brought on board is Digital Universe. Digital Universe is an amazing tool uh, written by Bill Eaves. And it is a full uh, uh, stellar simulator that enables you to plot out where stellar objects are in the sky, stars, uh, uh, nebula, gaseous clusters, uh, quasars, galaxies, asteroids, comets. Um, you can move the sky around. You can, you can position it to any time in the past or the future, any position on Earth, any sky view that you like. It's fully scriptable um, so that you can create things like animations and so forth. Uh, you can you, you can even script it up so that you can watch eclipses happen, right, by positioning yourself. And it comes with an, an incredibly thorough database 
of stellar objects. So you say, let's I'm going to click on something over here. Uh, well, let's click on a planet, uh, Mercury, which of course is obscured by the sun right now. And you'll get all sorts of data on how to view it, um, when it rises, when it doesn't rise. And if you click on more info, you'll find that a lot of these objects have all sorts of data and um, information. It's almost like an encyclopedia. Um, I use this quite a lot with my children. Uh, they enjoy it very much indeed. Um, for me, it's particularly helpful because what I can do is I can go ahead and plot out a plan. So let's say I know that I'm going to be at some park somewhere in northwest Connecticut on such and such a date. I can go ahead and create reports for objects that I want to view uh, along with coordinates and times and so forth and it makes my life a lot easier um, when I'm out there uh, doing my amateur astronomy. Um, the digital universe is uh, resplendent and it's fully mooey gooey. Um, it's very easy to use. It has terrific documentation, some really amazing graphics that I haven't shown you all. It's available both on a physical CD format as well as a digital download and it starts at a very modest 17 pounds 50 pence um, and is available for sale right now. Um, let's take a look at some audio stuff. So a lot of the things that have been commercial in the past are now available freely. So the incredible audio evolution is now free. So we're not going to take a look at that. But one thing I didn't want to show you all is this. This is DigiBooster 3.1. Uh, and it is modern tracker software. It's fully com back compatible with DigiBooster 2. Uh, so you can load in all of your uh, DVM mods from the old days. Uh, it uses a very high quality um, <coughs> audio engine, 24-bit audio up to 192 uh, kilohertz in resolution. Let's see if I can find something here to, to show you all. I'm trying to remember. This is, uh, it's been a long time since I've used this machine. I've been on the 5,000 for a while, so I can't quite remember. Um, so, do we have audio? Y'all can't hear that? All right, well, anyway, um, it is movie based as a really terrific uh, sample editor um, and an instrument editor. Uh, it has a it's fully AREC scriptable, so it's uh, automated. Uh, you can even uh, create music, and then the player itself is uh, freely distributable. Um, and it is a little on the pricey side for Amiga software, but if you are a music creator, and you don't really want to use older stuff like uh, Occamed Sound Studio, since it hasn't quite been updated yet, but I'm sure Trevor and company are hard at work on that. Um, this is an excellent option for you. It is available starting at 59 euros through our friends in Germany. Yes? I was going to say, did I plug in the response? Well, on the audio. Yes, that is the right one, so we're not getting it, we're just not getting it. What just happened? That's okay, we'll try again. Yeah, so it looks like we're going through another restart cycle. It's hard to take this across the country. Yeah, it really is. I'm not getting it anywhere. There we go. Guys, I'm really sorry for this. It's not intended. All right, so uh, DigiBooster is available through um, um, APC and TCP, the same people who publish in Make Future Magazine. They also have some other software titles available for sale, including uh, Cygnus Ed 5, which is a terrific programmer's text editor, um, which is used by the inimitable Stephen Soli, along with a lot of the folks who code on the OS. Uh, some of the software that's available has been around since uh, the early days of OS 4, and one of the tools that I use on uh, my X5000, and I probably don't have it fully working over here on the Pegasus, is Amiphoto. Uh, Amiphoto is very similar to the types of photographic organizers that you'll find on, on mainstream platforms and it just crashed. Um, it doesn't crash on a normal machine, guys. Um, you can have all sorts of multiple skins. It's fully skinnable. Um, you can have upwards of 500 albums of a million photographs. 
it does use both its own internal native viewer as well as the ability to pipe out the image to any external viewer that you might like. Um, it can create web albums, which is pretty cool, uh, at the push of a button. So you can export all this stuff to a directory and then archive it and ship it up to a, a server and um, you have a very nice uh, web-based uh, album. Uh, it is available for sale at 20 euros uh, and it's through Alinea Computers, uh, also in Germany. They've got a lot of other things for sale as well, including things like A Notice 2, um, which is a great uh, post-it note type solution, and a webcam viewer, and a bunch of other stuff. Um, some things that you might imagine, we know, for example, that there are certain system components that are available commercially. MUI is available for pay, um, of course. We're up to uh, MUI 5 on OS 4. Uh, there was just a recent um, release of that just a couple weeks ago, an update there. Uh, the Radeon HD drivers from Aeon and uh, some of the things that I particularly like are the warp data types um, from, I'm trying to remember his name, is it Oliver, Oliver somebody? Not sure, but anyway, these data types are fully accelerated for the power PC. Um, they are faster than the data types that are included with the operating system. You get data types for JPEG images, PNG images, TIFF images, BMP images, the bitmap images, PCX images, which are pretty old. And uh, you can even open old Photoshop files. Uh, it's very configurable. Uh, it comes with this lovely press tool as well, and it's, uh, it does make a significant difference if you're using tools that use image data types. It's available for 15 pounds. Uh, very, we have a lot of software where we go from commercial to free, but the reverse is rarely true, and there is a wonderful tool that has made that reverse, which is um, A Organizer from Andy Broad. Uh, it's a very simple GUI, as you can see, but it packs an awful lot of features. Um, you have the ability to add alarms, you can have uh, very complex uh, repeating events, uh, it's very good with um, uh, keeping track of your daily uh, appointments and so forth. It's fully scriptable through Python and AREX. And the killer feature, of course, is that this can be synced to Google Calendar and to your phones that use Google Tools as well. It also imports iCal and uh, VCal files, uh, and it is available via AMI Store. And speaking of AMI Store, it might be a, a good time to pull that up. I think pretty much everyone here uses Amistore, but in case uh, you've been living under a rock for the past few years, um, this is the online software distribution client that was created by Matthew Newman and uh, AM Technologies. There's quite a few software titles available here, uh, games, tools, uh, quite a few of the ones that I mentioned. Let's log in here and I can show you. So again, on the X5000, this is a little faster. Uh, so here you'll see things like AMI WebView, AMI Photo, uh, Alinarius, uh, uh, which is a, a game, A Notice, all those are from um, Alinea Computing. Nemo Sound is a tool from um, Lyle Hazelwood that um, uh, helps you to control the HD audio on your X1000. Um, there's quite a few games here. Some of this stuff is not available yet. Um, there is the enhancer package I'll talk about shortly. Uh, MK Share is another tool from Andy Broad, which is a, a great little tool that lets you share a mouse and a keyboard between um, uh, different Amigas without having to use a hardware-based KVM. It works really, really well, and it's available for six dollars and fifty cents here in the U.S. Uh, there is a organizer which I just mentioned. There is uh, Dear Me Up, which is a um, which apparently is not available until through Amy, so you can buy it directly from Glams. Uh, this is a really great little um, file browsing tool on this machine. I don't have the latest version; it's actually quite back level. But uh, you'll notice that it looks quite a bit like Workbench Explorer from Mark Ritter that was shown yesterday. Uh, like Mark's tool, this is also. Uh, based around a reaction GUI. You can set um, up viewers for any types of data files. 
In the current version, you have the ability to navigate through archives. It has its own internal uh, graphics viewer. Um, you can do almost any file operations in here that you like. Uh, so for people uh, like me, who don't come from the Amiga platform originally and are much more familiar with things like Windows or OS X or the classic Mac operating system, file browsers like this are, are a real boom. Um, the current version of Dear Me Up, which is up to three point something or another, has its own built-in update engine, uh, so you don't have to manually download updates anymore like you did previously, and it's available for a very reasonable price direct from the author. Um, I should probably show you all some uh, other tools that I use here that are commercially available, such as the editor for Storm C5. Storm C was one of the uh, big uh, integrated development environments for the classic uh, Amiga in its later days. Um, there's been a very big project to bring that back to version 5 to be OS4 native. And the first component of that to be released is this editor. It's um, not exactly the most feature-rich tool, if I'm honest. Um, but there are some things about it that I really like indeed. So um, it has really wonderful syntax highlighting, as you can see here. Um, and it's, of course, fully configurable to whatever colors you like. Very simple to set up. Um, it has the ability here to uh, fold certain functions. Uh, it's a fully tabbed interface. Uh, of course, you can do uh, find and replace. Um, it's not exactly the most powerful for that. Um, it is extendable. So right now, it supports Amiga Guide files, AREX files, OS catalog files, and C files. Um, and you can set up uh, the uh, syntax highlighting and specifics here on a per file class basis. Um, it is available currently for 30 euro, which is a bit dear if I'm honest for a text editor. But if you're used to text editors on mainstream platforms like I don't know, Pluma or something on Linux, uh, from Mate, this is a really nice option. And uh, I actually use it quite a lot uh, for work purposes. Now, of course, the, uh, the big enchilada of commercial software here um, on the Amiga is this enhancer software from Aeon. <coughs> it comes in a variety of editions, and as you can see, this is really, really back level. This is version 1.2. Um, it includes a ton of different utilities, gadgets, classes, tools, you name it. And some of the ones that I particularly like the most are have got to be things like uh, multi-viewer and multi-edit. So let's see here, I'll try to open up a few things here to show you in, uh, in multi-viewer. Let's see what I open up here. Uh, um, <coughs> You get this lovely little preview here and file list. You can add to it and remove to it. Um, it uses the ISS icons. Um, there are options for uh, acceleration for scaling. You can do some, uh, some rotation. Uh, it opens up pretty much anything that you have data types for. It integrates very well with Clip Viewer. Let me show you that. This is a really great little tool. Uh, okay, which is apparently not installed on this machine. But um, uh, Clip Viewer is a fantastic commodity that I use on my X5000 a lot. Um, and it lets you browse through multiple clipboards. So when you're creating large documents, um, you can sort of create a sort of a scrapbook and have it easy to hand. There is a, a version of um, Multi Viewer called Multi Edit, which is uh, basically the, if you, if you took multi-viewer and notepad and, and thrust them together, you'd have uh, multi-edit, which is just another text editor to use. It doesn't have things like syntax highlighting or anything. That's not really the point of it. The point of it is to have a, a scriptable, more fully featured version of notepad. And that's one of the things about all these enhancer tools that I find is that they take concepts that already exist on your Amiga and they make them that much better. So, for example, uh, instead of having the old clock, you now have a clock that has multiple aliasing and multiple skins. 
uh, and it's very configurable. Um, you know, it just makes your Amiga that much better. Um, it includes a calendar utility here, uh, which is also fully skinnable, which we didn't have before. Um, and it, that replaces some freeware options. It comes with uh, candy, which I can't show you here, but all the X5000s and tapeworms that you see on the floor, with those lovely animated backdrops that my children love. It includes that. It includes an updated version of SFS2. It has a time guard commodity to make sure that your clock is always in sync with the network time service, uh, the network uh, uh, time servers, uh, updated Nami DVD, War 3D Nova, the Radeon HD driver, the Open GLS, GLES compatibility layer, extra data types with better features, updated uh, TuneNet, which I don't think I have on this machine. This is an older version. But the nice thing about this, of course, is that it actually has uh, a, a fully working browser. The Shoutcast stream which was broken from a long time ago. Uh, it's a lot more stable than the version of TuneNet that existed prior to its acquisition by Aeon. Um, there are three editions, a special edition, a standard edition, and uh, a plus edition, depending on whether or not you want Radeon HD and which version of it. But if you don't have a machine that's capable of running a, a Radeon HD card, it, the enhancer pack and all that stuff comes in at a very reasonable $25. Okay. There are a ton of commercial games available. One of the things that um, my children do it's almost exclusively is take up my X5000 and play games on them. Things like Mace or Swamp Defense 2, and there's a bunch coming, like Tower 57, which was just demonstrated, as well as um, an updated version of uh, Wings from CinemaWare that's being done. There are some simple things that have been released, like Emotion, Emotion is a, for some reason he doesn't want to watch my Pegasus. Uh, Emotion is a video player that works really well. It's based on FFmpeg, it's from Entwickler X. Um, it's something that just works. If you've had to work with mPlayer in the past, you know that you have to fiddle with settings constantly. And Emotion just works, this example notwithstanding. Um, and it's particularly good on machines with uh, the Radeon HD uh, uh, cards. Uh, for those of you who don't have that, DD player is still available for sale, and it actually works really well on machines that don't have Radeon HD cards. So these are some videos that my children get to watch all the time, and um, uh, it decodes them very nicely. It's very stable, as you can see. Yes. All right. Take you back to your Saturday morning cartoons. Um, and it, because of overlay, even machines that have very little CPU power can play standard resolution videos very nicely with DVD player. That's also available for sale. Um, I had hoped to show you all quite a bit more, but because of the performance of the machine and the fact that a lot of stuff isn't working, I'm not going to be able to do that. So I'm going to have to close here early, I'm very sorry to say. And um, what I would do here is I would just go ahead and remind you all of the Intuition Day site where you can look up all of this stuff. And get more information on each one of these little tools here. So let's say I was interested in the organizer that we talked about briefly. It'll take you directly to the, uh, uh, the homepage with all the information that you're interested in, as well as a link to buy it. So for example, let's say I'm interested in taking a look at that text editor that I showed you, Storm C5 editor. You can get more information, or you can click on this little buy icon, and it actually takes you to the, the default dealer to purchase it. So it's a very good resource, and I highly recommend you check it out. Um, um, there are some other things also that I could point out, including things like Hollywood Editor, which is uh, Hollywood Designer rather, which is a really terrific tool. And I don't know if I even have it installed on this machine. I don't have it installed on this machine. Um, but in addition to using this tool to create uh, in, uh, actual programs, 
Um, one of the things that I use it for on my um, uh, Amiga 5000 is to create presentations at the office. So this is a really great uh, replacement for things like PowerPoint. Uh, this is available, you have to buy Hollywood along with it, so it is not cheap, but um, given all the options for graphics and, and uh, uh, interactive capabilities and programmability, it's a really, really great little tool. Okay, I think I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up at this point. Um, I was up very late last night and I can't remember what I wanted to show you guys and I'm really sorry. There's a lot of really wonderful commercial games here as well that you can purchase. Things like Hunnison. That's also available through Andy's store. There's a bunch of others as well, like Maze. It's not going to play very well right here. Um, anyway, I'll let you all go take a look at the list online and, and, and see what you think. Um, I think instead what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to go ahead and stop this and open it up to questions. Try to get this disaster over with as quickly as possible. Any questions? Excellent. All right. Thank you all very much for sitting through this. <laughs> I appreciate it.